on US dollar yen. Everyone doing okay? You have a chart you want to share, Dan? Now's a good time if you guys want to share your looks of what you're stalking after the number, what's on your radar screen. Just give me the link and I'll show it. So I want to teach you guys a little something that I use and I've taught. It's a very simple method. You could put it in your Okay. Okay. You could put it in your trader toolbox. It's called a weekly off number. It's very simple. And all you have to do is count back two weeks and you'll see these numbers come into play during the week. Last week we held the off number. So you just count back from this week's candle two and you look at what the close was. And the close was 3375, 3375. So that number could come into play closing underneath it, which we are right now. 50 underneath it is a two week reversal. Give me a why if you understand it. And if you just start paying attention to some of these two week off numbers, you'll see that you could trade, you could trade them. Uh, you could, uh, could have been short, uh, the Canada and covered at the off number. Okay, you could buy at the off number. So, uh, do you guys understand that? Experiment with it a little bit. So, go to your weekly, go to your weekly charts. And I don't, you can do it with any time frame, but I do it on the weekly, and I count back two candles. I write down that number, and you'll be amazed at how frequently that number comes into play as an inflection point. So I've been teaching this for a few years. Everyone understand it? It's pretty basic. Getting the nice pop in Euro. Let's see what the two week off number is in Euro. I'm pretty sure that we're not. Yeah, this is the weekly. We're way underneath it. So the weekly off number is 107.96. So we're way underneath it. Next week it's going to be easier to turn it because uh, the off number is going to be 106.56. Everyone understand it? Give me a why if you get it. Yeah, it's a real simple thing, Dan. Uh, I believe I learned it from a guy named Eric Hadick. Ever hear of Eric Hadick? He's a newsletter writer. Pretty interesting guy. Two close reversal. Just like three drives, just like three drives I learned from J.R. Hill in the 70s and then started applying my RSI work to it. So really, like Solomon said, there really is nothing new under the sun. People may think they invented a new way to trade. And in fact, let me, let me say this. Everyone tries to sell the secret of trading. You know what the secret of trading is, guys? The secret is there is no secret. It's hard work and persistence. That's the secret to trading. Can I get some agreement on that? Anytime someone wants to sell you the secret, run away. Because it doesn't exist. How about an amen on that? The holy grail. Patience. The waiting's the hardest part, Patricia. The waiting's the hardest part. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. 
So Blake, if you can hear my voice, if you have some comments, post a uh, number or you're busy, that's cool. I understand. He, sh he should be with us uh, shortly, Dale. <clears throat> we, okay. we, still can... have, we still have some uh, ongoing moves, some retracement yeah. of the initial dollar weakness, but uh, to be honest, it seems that uh, the vast majority of uh, uh, the tickers are still weaker than uh, pre-NFP, having to do with the dollar, I mean. Aussie is testing important levels. The, both the metals look really strong, I mean, silver and uh, and gold. Silver yeah. is actually uh, testing major, major level near uh, uh, 18.5 uh, dollars. And gold yeah. is uh, coming closer to the descending trend line that has ha uh, that has capped the downtrend uh, since uh, it peaked. Did, uh, it cl is it above the 200 on the gold now? Yes, gold million. penetrated okay. uh, penetrated uh, the 200 pre-NFPs and okay. uh, looks really, uh, really strong. Okay. Let's see. So we have our second drive here in gold. I still think that uh, silver looks a bit weaker to me. Gold making new highs, silver trying. Probably the biggest difference, I think what makes uh, what makes a difference now between the two metals is that one of them was already uh, above uh, a resistance zone while uh, silver is still striving with it and you know what it is, when there is open interest for, for a specific level, you know, it's, yes. it's hard to penetrate. But on the other hand, if we see 1850 give way, uh, we, we should probably see acceleration due to stop losses. Yeah, so it's much more positive when silver's leading the way instead of coattailing it. Yes, uh, to me, I'm, look, I'm looking at this divergence. Let's see what we have on the one hour. You know, Steve, I'm I'm big on divergences and three drive formations. So uh, the one hour, actually, I'd like to see it take out this early high and the RSI stay under 70, it's trading 60. You know, a, a friend of mine used to talk about my trading, and you know what he used to say? Steve, you say, Dale, you love to hear the ice crack because I'm always fading, you know, looking for turns. Uh, one, of my, one of my idols is Paul Tudor Jones, and he says all the big money is made at the turns. So that hypnotized me. Although trend followers like the Turtles, they do pretty well. You said before there is no holy grail in, uh, no. in uh, profiting from trading. Everybody has uh, their style, and as long as you've mastered the way you you know how to trade, you you can you can make money out of it. Okay, Greg is saying five down in Canada, then three up. So maybe Greg that could stop in. When he he will. Chance. He said around uh, in 15 minutes from now he will. Blake is here, by the way, from what I see. Yeah, I was just I was just going to say, you know, um, you know, you've got gold stronger. You've got bonds that are coming off their highs. Uh, the dollar is actually still really strong here. So, um, you know, it's 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 hard to you know it's it's you're seeing like a lot of cross currents. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, nothing's really making a whole lot of sense. The dollar yen's holding above 110. Uh, the pound's weak. The euro's weak. Um, you know, the the kiwi can't break 70 cents. It's a uh, it's a real tricky tape right now. And um, you know, bonds ripped and came down. Gold's still holding up. Silver's holding up. Um, futures are coming down a bit. Uh, you know, it's 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 a it's a real tricky. You know, I'm not really too sure what to make of the price action just yet. Well, but I think we, the FA community face cleaned up on the short side of Canada. So I asked the crowd. Yeah, and, and many people were short with you know what uh, I showed Greg is showing and what I saw tagging that trend line uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, the retest. So. A lot of people are doing well, although I did recommend on Twitter taking half plus 35. Um, 
And uh, so that's been a big trade. You've had a great week, Blake. You know, I heard you were uh, long gold into, where were you when the missiles were launched last night? I was uh, actually on the a baseball diamond with uh, the with, you know. <laughs> <No. Yeah. laughs> So uh, let me ask you this. Uh, when your son was on the field or at bat and you were screaming, everyone thought you were cheering for your son and it was a $15 gold spike. Yeah, actually, it was. Uh, it was uh, we were at practice, and I was on my way back. But um, hey, guys, just real, real quick, I, I have to, I have to point out, gold is holding up really well. The dollar is holding up really well. Usually, that's a sign of a little bit of risk conversion. So it's gonna. I, w I want to see what bonds do here. I'm watching the ten year. The ten years, you know, pulled back a little bit. The thirty years pulled back a little bit from spike highs. But if, if you look at the ten-year bond, we're also at major, major resistance. Where you know, the, a lot of the markets really short bonds, and so if bonds rally, that could uh, that could really shake the tree a little bit here. Um, especially just looking at equity market futures that are somewhat weak at the moment. It's kind of strange. Is the S and P's are showing down eight handles, and the Dow's up fourteen points. Is that one stock that's holding up the Dow, or or what? I have okay. my Dow futures. My Dow, my Dow futures are down sixty five points. Okay, because I'm showing it on the screen at fourteen eight, but I'm getting a lot of gaps there, so maybe I have the wrong symbol uh, plugged in there. So the off number in uh, the S and P's. So the S and P's aren't making any hay out of this recovery. Um, they gave actually at the top lake, they gave a two week reversal signal right here. Okay, we closed under the previous two weeks. So right near the top, you had a, a nice two week reversal signal that hasn't been negated. It still has to work lower, uh, 2347. So we're right at the off number now, 234780, it's a two week off number in the S&P. So they still look heavy. Yeah, they, they, they're trading heavy. And, and and really, I'm not sure what to make of this price. Actually, silver is starting to hit highs, guys. Or not overnight highs, but hitting uh, North American highs. Okay. So we are going to that 1850 level here. This is uh, the one up. This is a four hour. We're still diverging. Let's see what happens with the one. See if it confirms the high. You see this? We're about to make new highs. The high overnight was a 73 reading on the RSI. Currently, the reading is 65. So, looks like a wedge to me, Blake. We'll see. Yeah, it could be. So, you know, guys, uh, no one is has a gun to your head to trade after the NFP, and if you're getting, like, cross currents, as Blake is describing, you know it's okay to do nothing, right, and let the markets reset and wait and be patient. You know, I use the metaphor that great surfers do not try and catch every wave if you watch them out there. They, too, wait for setups. So if you don't have a setup, try and get over FMO, fear of missing out. Because you know what? I miss trades every day, and it's okay. You know why? Because there's always another bus around the corner. So uh, it's always better to not search for trades but have them hit you in the face. They're so compelling, you can't miss them. Write it down. We will always miss trades, and that's okay, because there's always another. You ever miss a trade, Blake? Steve? A billion or so. I don't know. Sorry, I'm just trying to manage some trades here. Hold on. All right, that's okay. Like Carl Sagan, Steve, I've missed billions and billions of trades. Yeah, but, you know, you you have to get over that feeling. I mean, you know, very often you're like, oh, I was watching this. Why didn't I take the position? It doesn't matter. Yeah. If you yeah, didn't take right. it, it doesn't matter anymore. Also, after losing trade, a lot of people get into a fetal position, Steve. 
if you watch professional athletes like quarterbacks, they throw an interception, they forget about it. Uh, or they make a bad play, they come back into the huddle, they don't dwell on being stopped out by throwing a, a pick. They're ready for the next play. That's exactly so, right. You know, that, next that, that's is how a good word to have. Next is a good word to have, whether it's a good trade or or the trade didn't work out. I really like that expression. Uh, I don't know where it came from that I'm either winning or learning. I really like that. Yeah, it's good. And, and actually, that applies to what I was about to say, that that doesn't mean that you shouldn't look back in what trades you've taken and what you've done, because uh, simply studying what went wrong is extremely important. But that doesn't mean that you should dwell on, uh, you know, a, a bad trade or, or a good trade and, you know, not move forward the way you should. It's not a reason not to move forward and take the next trade if you just made money on the previous one. It's also not a reason if you lost money in the previous one. So neither fear or, uh, you know, the feeling that, oh, I just pocketed some money, uh, you know, and I shouldn't move to the next uh, trade because, okay, that was, that was a good uh, income for, for the day. Uh, neither of those are reasons uh, not to take the next trade because you, you are supposed to have a methodology. So if something applies to that, I mean, if a trade looks good according to your criteria, you should always take it. Uh, you know, I do know some people, though, and a lot of them I, I met on the floor in Chicago, they had monetary goals. And if they, you know, they were shooting to make uh, $1,000 a day scalping, once they hit it, they left. Yes, but and listen. They, and they were pretty, pretty successful. I know some money managers. You're that, right. But listen to what you said. Those people had made a specific goal part of their criteria, Right. 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 Part of their criteria was that I'm aiming for that today, something specific. So that's that's understandable. I mean, that's that's something. Yes, that does happen. So yes, if you but but that means that you you should also have equivalent criteria to what you're um, uh, to what you're uh, allowed to lose or miss. Okay. Uh, ZN is uh, is just testing the highs again above 125. Uh, th this is also the reason why we see weakness in uh, USD yen. Uh, if ZN breaks above 126, actually we definitely have an expansion of the range, and uh, the double bottom in uh, in the 10-year bonds should bring higher prices. So this is a very very important important juncture for. Uh, uh, the dollar and uh, use the yen uh, even more specifically. I was yeah, talking the dollar, about dollars putting in a pretty interesting candle here. Yeah, I was I was talking mostly about the ZN actually the ten year uh, mm. bond. It, it it has registered a double bottom, uh, and if we break above one twenty six, uh, this thing can uh, can fly higher. Uh, dollar is uh, is mixed at the moment. It's it's strong against plenty of currencies, but on the other hand, against uh, some uh, against the MXN, for example, against um, uh, the metals, it's uh, against uh, yen. It's uh, weaker. As Blake said, this might look, look bring at the tails we're getting on gold. This is the second big tail. Uh, so to me, it's incomplete. You know, I, I, I like the number three. It's a number of completions, Steve. And, you know, people go, well, why Dale three? Well, okay, how about three strikes, you're out. The third time's a charm. The earth is the third planet from the sun. Uh, even on the spiritual level, the Godhead is three persons in one. It's a number of completion. So that's why the third drive uh, is uh, a formation that I pay attention to. Not that twos don't work, but we're getting some nice candles here. Uh, some, you're the candlestick guy. Uh, what do you call these two, if you're, you see my screen, these two wicks? Uh, they still have blue bodies, but you could actually see the selling pressure here. Uh, both, both of them are pin bars. Actually, the first one definitely. Uh, it's a pin bar. It's a... Uh, it's a white colored shooting uh, star because you can have a shooting star that's you know not a red candle that it's actually a blue candle or uh, or as we call it you know white or black candles actually is the 
all names of them. So uh, the first one is a shooting star. The second one, the wick currently is not at least twice the body. So currently this is not a pin bar. I mean, uh, okay. having to do with theory. But if we move yeah. a little bit lower, this is going to be a second pin bar in a row. And yes, as you said, uh, higher wicks are obviously warnings because they uh, they do show that there is selling pressure up there. Um, although I have to tell you that I'm usually looking at uh, higher time frame charts to filter out the noise, especially especially when we have uh, days like this that we have some announcement that is market moving. So I'm I'm mostly care to see you know, uh, how dollar is going to look in a couple of hours from now. Okay. Euro and, uh, and pound are taking it up the chin, by the way. Now they've started moving. Aussie is also testing, uh, Aussie USD testing important support about to penetrate it, 0.75. If you go to the Aussie chart, you'll see that we have horizontal support at 0.75. It's currently under threat. If we move a little bit lower, we are breaking uh, to, let me see. We will be breaking actually to almost three month lows if we move a little bit lower from here. So Aussie yes. is at a very yeah. dangerous spot for the bulls at the moment. On the other hand, USD CAD has recovered some of its prior losses yeah. despite despite the the strong uh, numbers from Canada. The, un the unemployment numbers were three times better as expected. A lot of Americans uh, fleeing to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's not, and it's not because of the Vietnam War. If you want to see, see a very in, a very interesting week, you should have a look at, at oil at the moment. This candle in oil is, you know, is very, very bearish if it closes like that, the daily one, I mean. You want me to share my screen? I got it. If you go on the yeah, daily, yeah. Just, just look at the yeah. candle. Yeah. Carter Worth on CNBC thought this was a trap, too. Uh, he's a very good technician. Uh, he's one of the few guys I really like watching this technical stuff on listen TV. a very a very critical level was uh, was 52 dollars and despite having penetrated through it intraday almost reached 53 in uh, in the cfd um as you see we we're now trading below it once again so in my book a close below 52 is going to leave behind a very nasty candle uh, a very nasty daily candle and yeah this could could be a first signal uh, that this um, uh, brutal move higher after testing the ascending trend line at 47 was um, perhaps you know just just a rebound and nothing more than that the strength of it looked you know felt a little bit impulsive but if we get rejected by 52 uh, you know the bearish uh, thesis remains very strong Uh, that's Carter Worth on CNBC, and yes, Alex, I saw that. Uh, Dan, you've been in uh, Aussie CAD. I think I have a chart I could show from Alex here. Yes, that was a very good chart, actually. Um, th there was a head and shoulders formation uh, in Aussie CAD. Got a few charts up here. Dimitri has one. 
Ci vediamo al cielo. Alex is a cloud guy. Yeah, I don't use it anymore. Who clouds? But I've seen a lot of people use them very, very successfully. I have to admit. Okay, so he's showing the U.S. dollar up against this, uh, possibly diverging up here. A lot of room underneath it for the cloud. I think there was another chart shown by Dimitri. Let's see what Dimitri has here. Uh, you got to be careful of this uh, this dollar. I mean, we rallied into new highs. We, I, we, this may be one of those days where we, we, we just break on both sides. You know, we break lows like we did in the dollar, ripped up to new highs, break highs, and then turn right back around and just kind of close the day where we started. This, this might be one of those days. So just be real careful chasing the market. Yeah, don't chase anything, including women. Right, Blake? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you chased your wife. All right, so there, there's uh, the bond chart. Yeah, up at resistance there. That's excellent. So, Blake, these are the kind of days where they're just shopping for liquidity and uh, trying to pick off stops over, you know, minor highs and minor it, lows. It, it, it very well could be. The, only, the thing that I can't stop paying attention to is how strong gold is. I mean, I know, I know, you know, we we hit highs and we pull back a couple of bucks, but still, gold's holding on to its gains, its overnight gains. It hasn't right. given those back yet. Now, if we start giving back all those overnight gains, then 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 the dollar is probably going to continue to rally. Okay, nice look, Dimitri. Dan Norberg, uh, that Aussie kid that has been play for you. That's what uh, FX Tika showed yesterday. Did she point your eye towards it? Lousy cat. I'm coming off camera. Everyone knows uh, what I look like through the time. Okay. You've been chatting with her for a few weeks? Okay, so you already knew her. Okay. By the way, Dale, uh, the head and shoulders target for Rosicad is at 99.099, of course, I mean 50. So there's still some room to, for the pair to run, at least until it reaches the, uh, the head and shoulders target, because the neckline was, at, was roughly at 1.014. Okay. So I want to thank... Uh, Dimitri for this look on T-Bonds. Alex for his look. Hello, Tamir. Arianto. Arianto is saying that the uh, Aussie Kiwi, which is something that uh, we took advantage of on the downside, it's getting close to a buy for him. So. I know that Blake likes it long-term. I like it long-term. I mean, you look at a weekly chart, you know, you could almost make a case for 120 Oz again. So let's see what he has on the weeklies. As long as we don't negate that breakout that happened a few months ago. If I miss any of your screenshots, I'm sorry. It's a small question box, and sometimes I don't see it, so... All right, so here's Hardianto's count. Uh, looks like two is going to come in under 107 and a half to 106.70, uh, which was. I yes. have the same count as he has, but I also need to stress out here that if you look at the chart, uh, 1075 is also a very strong horizontal support level. So not yeah. only not only uh, I also see five waves up and three waves uh, down, but we're also we we also tested at the lows 
uh, very, very significant horizontal support. So uh, uh, the high of wave one up here. Not only that, look, look on your left, more more peaks up there. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so this is a very critical level. It's it's a great level to bounce off. Is it guaranteed okay. that we're going to bounce off? No. But is it a great level to bounce off from? Yes, definitely. Risk reward is there. I mean. All right, we're getting some updates on the metals here. And uh, one from Nick, where I think Nick's harmonics are saying, yeah, new update. Silver at alternate ABC pattern. Let's see what she's got here. She's got a couple. Okay, you can see that. And here, here it is. There's a chart. What a great website you designed, Steve. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, you know, everything at your fingertips like this and the team you put together. I guess I'm not subjective because I'm with you guys now, but A, B, A, B equals C, D comes in at 1948. So Nick is looking higher now towards 19... 19 and a half. Okay. So uh, that's good for me because, you know, maybe if I hadn't have been here and looked at Nick's work, I may have, tr I may have tried the short at 1850. Now I'm going to be patient. So you know what? That's a, a, a point I want to make, and very few people talk about this, Steve, because it doesn't show up in your account balance. Avoiding bad trades, losing trades, is just or even more important than being in good trades. And, you, you know, it doesn't show up in your account because you didn't take the trade. But uh, avoiding a bad trade by doing intelligence gathering that makes you take a, a second or third look uh, as a case is being built for whether or not you want to click your mouse uh, is really important. And that's why I, I'm a big believer in intelligence gathering because you know, we can become attached to a scenario. It's a psychological thing. But if you look at other people's work, especially the team assemble, assembled here at FA, you know, it can give you pause and save you a lot of heartache. You guys agree with me? How about a why that avoiding bad trades is just or even more important than being in winning trades? Yeah, big Y. Okay, so that's another advantage of um, not tr trading in uh, in isolation. Nice work, Nick. Everyone doing okay? I'm not talking to myself. Oil rejection at Daily Cloud. Okay, so. Crude Alex, oil has turned negative now on the day. Yeah, so that was a great eye by Steve. It's probably a short here, guys. Actually, Steve, I think we're going sub 40, which makes me think that Canada, after we get down to some of these targets, it's going to be a good buy. Because I think that crude could actually trade back at monthly support, just my Nostra Pinker, uh, down around 38 to 35. Theoretically, it's possible, but a lot of things have to, you know, have to come together for that to happen. So, uh, how many of you that have never been with me before enjoy seeing looks from the community, and that it helps you? Look at that, right off the cloud. Okay. Usually you go into a room and it's, you know, some guy who thinks he walks on water and you, you know, you, you stand up and sit down whenever they do. This is collaborative, so one of my favorite sayings is don't isolate, collaborate. The difference between what I've been doing for four years and what we're doing now is I have a I have go-to people plus the community. 
Yep, go go to Blake, go to Nick, go to Steve, go to Stelios, go to Grega. So it's not just a community anymore. And the community was great. We get these looks all the time, plenty of ideas, actionable ideas. But now we have uh, great traders backing us up and providing a format that makes it easy to access all. You subscribe, Leon? Okay, so you like the room. Makes it all come together? Okay. Any of my people subscribe to uh, FA the first week here? Hardianto did. That's it. Just did. Good buddy. Thank you. That's how you support the community is by, you know, Blake has expenses through hiring me. I'm, I'm very expensive. So to support a free room, you know, most people would have had this been a paid room. Blake didn't want to have it be a paid room. So if the room is helping you, the way to say thank you is to be a subscriber. Can I get a why that you understand that? And that you'll not only see great things from the community here in the room, we're going to get all the alerts. And then but there, there's a lot of things that happen outside of the room. Okay, Leon's going to extend it. Go, go for the whole year. No, actually, Mark, the room is free. So uh, I suggest you at least take a trial and take a look at the platform that these guys have put together. Um, it amazes me. It took me a little time to get used to it. It's got so much information in it that you can get a little bit overwhelmed, but you can customize everything on it. I'm glad you're enjoying, Jeff. Okay, that, that's the end of my request. It's not a plea, it's a request. That if the room is helping you, you're only talking about eight, nine pips a month when you could be generating that every day in our community. In fact, you know, the guys don't like me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. You, you know the song, New York, New York? If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Well, this is truly how I feel about this. After doing this community stuff for four years, is if you can't make it here, I really doubt you're going to be able to make it anywhere else. Okay, if you can't make it here, you can't make it anywhere. I know it's a little arrogant. So call me arrogant. That's just my level of conviction. Great look, Alex. Everyone thank Alex. Get off of Alex's cloud. So the crew tried to get into Alex's cloud here. And what happened was the Rolling Stones came in and they said, hey, you, get off of Alex's cloud. Eurocad, an interesting pair, by the way. Currently. What's that? Eurocad. Eurocad. Yeah, being helped a lot by the CAD numbers. It was a very clean, <coughs> technically, it, it's it's a very clean pair. It's been trading in a uh, very clean manner. Can show you if you want. That's the uh, that's a daily. Yep. See, this was a pretty classic divergence down here. Yes, we had very You're clear RSI divergence. divergence, and we were in a range yeah. for a big time for a big period after being in a triangle for a big uh, uh, period of time. We broke below the triangle. 
we were range bound since from November since uh, March and then we had an ascending wedge which we came out from fell back in the range retested the range and now we're, we're moving lower and currently testing 50% uh, fib so you know previous lows is also the 50% fib another move lower from here should take us at least another 200 pips lower where we find horizontal resistance and uh, 61.8 what do you say mate okay 30 right around 39 139 ish 200 pips uh, 141 is the next target 139.50 okay. is the next one okay we're getting an update and I'm sharing some of this stuff on NFP day and another update in US dollar yen basic technical we're at trend line resistance of 111 pretty good divergence on these spikes last night never closed down here so looks like we can make a move out looks like the yen can come out of here not sure what that noise is so here here's a look recent look be careful if your short yen crosses USD yen if you look uh, Dale has uh, penetrated intraday uh, 1150 one two three four five times during the past roughly 10 days so one out of two days it penetrates below but never manages to close below it so you know the more mm -hmm. failures we have as you understand you know the the higher the chance that uh, you know we, we might see a move higher because many attempts all of them have found very very strong support and this this is actually troubling for uh, uh, for the bears especially in an yeah. F NFP day because we can understand some of the previous days I mean the market was uh, you know hesitant to um, to extend uh, since you know who knows what what the NFPs would bring but now that the NFPs are out of the way uh, right. probably dollar has a, a higher chance of moving once again and yeah it looks like a bit of a descending triangle to me Steve uh, right here well and kind of a flat bottom here this yes, it, it is a flat number. bottom. Uh, it, it is actually descending. I have it as a descending channel. Uh, okay. But yes, it depends on how you draw the line. It, it can also be drawn as a triangle. The only sure thing is that the, the last few days uh, are starting to look like a bottoming formation. And, yeah, that's what I mean. And, and so exactly. Why, why can't we rally up to this uh, moving average here or even back towards 114? Oh, we 112. can. 112.60 might be enough maybe I'm not a wave guy but maybe this is a B C back to 1260 next time back under 110 first of all if you measure, see the, the first measures target measures all the way down to 102 yes first of all if you see the first target is a horizontal support level at 112 so the okay. risk reward is there I mean um, yeah. we have at least one to one reward to risk ratio for 112 and then, as you said, a break of 112, which is what rejected us the previous time when we tested it five days ago, uh, definitely opens uh, the door for a retest of the descending uh, resistance trend line you drew there in red. So, you know, I, I don't know if this trade is going to work. It depends on what we see happens with the dollar today. But one thing is for sure, the risk reward is there. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, Yazan, what room? Well, I ran, a, I ran a room on FX Street for three and a half years. Then I was somewhere else. Now I'm here. So a lot of people have been with me for about four years in a community setting. Does by, that answer By the way, Greg is, uh, is just logging on, and he's going to give us his view of uh, today's moves. Oh, fantastic.
No, you should be able to come in as staff, Greg, if you can hear me. He's already in, mate. He's just uh, oh. logging in. I can see him okay. already in the staff. All right. Okay. Hi, Greg. I'm going to make you the presenter, buddy. Does anyone remember the TV show The Outer Limits? Or am I just too old? At the beginning of the show, they would say, we, you, we are now taking control of your TV. You have now entered the outer limits. So here you go, Grega. Anytime still you're has, ready. Still has no sound for some reason, so uh, don't make him a presenter yet. Okay. Too late, I did. It's okay. Take it back. And, you know, I'm trying to resolve this with him as we speak. Okay. Okay, I'll take it back. So this is my look in the end. And if you're a bull, this this is how you get a move up towards 120 again, right? You have the election, huge move, 20 points. This is how you get 130 in the end. If you're a bull. You're a bull, Nick, in the end. And uh, Nick also went into the long side of Euro Yen. So, so, Nick, you want to talk? You want to talk about it? You want you want to show the chart? I'll give it to you. I don't. I don't think she's uh, listening. She's probably trading. No, she's talking to me on chat. In the chat box. We're communicating. Okay, okay, because I see her muted. You're the presenter, Dick, now. Unmute your mic. It's up near your name on staff. All right, I could probably do it for you. No, it doesn't let me do it. Next to your name. There we go. Hi, Nick. Uh, Nick, you're still muted. You have to click your mic, which is look up at attendees, the attendees box, and then click staff and then you'll see your name there you go hey Nick I don't know like to I saw her mic go green so I don't know why it's so hard for people to figure out this room it only took me five days can you see my chart? Yeah, you're, yes, Nick. and we can hear you just fine. Hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so there, there's the pattern. Basically, it's an A point eight, uh, A B C D, two point six one eight of this first leg, and it's a one point one three. So that's a butterfly. And you know, extended bull or bear runs very often end on a butterfly or crab pattern at new lows. This is a marginal new low. I really like like one, two, three, four, five. You know, we've held some support. I think uh, it's a good chance to have a go. So that's why I bought Euro Yen. So nice luck. Uh, just what? because also, you know, on the, on the Euro Dollar, I've been looking for this 50. It's just tagged. It's just slightly below, but it's the 50% 
retrace from the January lows as well. So I think that as long, along with the dollar yen, that there's quite a good chance after making this marginal new year, new low that um, euro dollar could um, bounce here too. So, um, but I don't like euro dollar enough to buy it. So I'm just tidying up my chart while I talk to you. So yeah, that's just why. You know, Nick, that trend line support's pretty wrong, big. So, yeah probably go a bit lower so that's why I'm not in euro dollar but I thought the euro yen looked interesting um, I've had a couple of goes at it I know where I'm wrong on this one anyway so so where does uh, the butterfly turn back into a caterpillar <laughs> 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 well if we look at a weekly chart in euro you know it's just it's a correction and it's just I think we'll see another leg high it's a bit messy that one but let me see if I get out so you know, this here is this previous low. There's not that much here. You know, it's just the fibs lined up. Um, but it's been really choppy and corrective and had struggled to move lower in the euro yen. And so when you see that, like, very often, um, you'll see it. You know, it's not trending lower. It's just, just chopping around. So we'll see. I like that I know where I'm wrong and I'm pretty close to where I'm wrong, so it's a nice tight entry. Thank so, you very much, Nick. And, and you have, uh, you want to show the yen itself as well? Yeah, so, okay, sure. Just, um, okay, same type of pattern. That, yeah, that same type of pose. Same, Yeah, same type, of, same type of pattern. I think that's quite a risk, you know, until we reverse the trend in the yen, that we continue lower to 108.40, which would be the ideal equality uh, right. target. But um, you know, we could maybe we could go 12 and, and a half and first. We could come all yeah, we could come all the way back to 112 and a half first to 112.80. So when I measure it, so yeah, that's just what I'm looking at. Okay. You know, well, we could sit on our hands for three weeks waiting for it to get there, so we could sell it again. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other, right? And the silver and uh, the gold action now, uh, uh, okay, things so have changed. I, I know that it's very unpopular to be bearish um, precious metals. Okay, but we made an A, B, C, D equal measured move this first swing higher in silver, and here yeah. we are. You know, this is a, this is a six one eight. If this is a the first leg of a bigger two wave correction then we're at the 618 here do I think it'll probably continue higher probably you know because everyone's bearish silver but you know this is resistance it's a retest of the 50% it's this spike low here from uh, last August so you know certainly it's a good place to take some profit and wait and see and, and it's definitely weaker than the goal yeah, it was all last year as well. Yeah, it definitely is. I agree. But then, you know, copper's had a really bad day today. Um, so uh, where's my copper? Yeah, you know my okay. saying about uh, copper and gold, right? Copper, right. Is a, copper is about construction. Gold is about destruction. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, sometimes silver, I think silver doesn't know what to do, you know. Sometimes silver doesn't know whether it's a precious metal or an industrial metal. Yeah. And and certainly the copper's having a, a, a bad day, so. It must and be I a Gemini. It, silver must uh, be a Gemini. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised to see copper all the way back to sort of 2.4, 2.4, down back down to these lows in a two-wave correction before continuing higher. So, um this I was a Trump that'll, trade. That'll weigh heavy, that'll weigh heavy on uh, silver too. So, but, yeah, that was a reflation trade, and uh, yeah, infra gold definitely is still bullish. So, I've been redrawing um, patterns. I think we'll continue higher, you know, to the six one eight of this entire decline. So, the six one eight from from the um, summer 2016 highs is up here at 1280 1285 um, I think that will you know it's very common to reverse at a 618 back to the 38.2 I think we'll do that there and then continue higher um, to 
in 1320s. That's kind of how I see gold unfolding for now anyway. So anything else before I go? I know it's not my show today. I feel a bit like I'm stealing people's time. Every day, every day, <laughs> every day you're welcome. Any time you're okay, welcome. Okay, no, I don't mind popping in anyway. I thought Stelios was on, so I came in to listen. I think, in. That's, a, I think that's the beauty of it. Yeah, so, exactly. And to me, it's not who has the most time. It's the collaboration and the sharing of ideas between us and between us and the community. So you're never I, you're never taking up too much time. Oh, I just don't want to take someone else's. So. All right. Cool. So okay. Good luck, everybody. All right. You have a great bye, bye. weekend, Thank Nick. You Thank input, uh, Nick. By the way, you for uh, all your... ready, Dale, uh, whenever you are. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Greg, I'll make you the presenter now. Can you hear me well? Yes. I could hear you. Oh, okay, perfect. So you could show your charts now. Uh, actually, firstly, okay, uh, I'll show my screen. You know, I tweeted that you might be here today, yesterday. You did? Did you see that? Yes, I noticed today because I was aware. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you see my chart now? Yeah, we're we're yeah. looking at euro, uh, the one hour and the weekly. Yes, actually, I put some notes here after Monfarm Perros report. So actually, I'm still. If you recall, on Monday when we launched the first webinar, I talked about the euro dollar potential bounce, and I'm still actually waiting on this pullback. To look for potential shorts so uh, this dollar move is just so strong you know you really know that, that dollar is in very strong uptrend when you don't get a real pullback even after this, this data today so clearly there is something bigger behind these moves and i think that euro dollar will just decline even further so uh, but from a technical perspective you know i'm a trader i want to get in uh, on the short side at the better levels which means i want higher prices and i'm still tracking these two counts uh, if you recall on monday i said that we are in some kind of wave five i thought that we will see a bounce maybe sharper and higher bounce today uh, or a wave c of a flat it was a different wave count but still i think that there will be a pullback we just need to be patient here and i hope we'll see it early next week um, Greg, uh, when Greg, uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I remember up around the 109 level, someone showed a wave count of euro pulling back towards 105.50, and I noticed that you have an alt five down there in that range, and then they're looking for a pretty good rally. So 105 on the uh, euro on the right hand side, you have an alt five. Right hand side, that chart, yeah. See it down there? Yeah, you have alt. Yes, okay, so this can be, yes. Uh, actually, you said that it could go where? 105.50, some people were talking about. Well, actually, I don't, I don't really care where, the, where it goes from here. As a trader, I what I want to see is higher prices you know okay. so uh, even if we go straight to the downside then as as a trader me i would just stay aside because um my checklist will not uh, be marked on all on every pieces that i need to see or every pieces of the puzzle be before i can a, uh, take a trade so for me what really matters is now where not where market will go from here but just wait what will happen if we'll see a bounce then I will look for potential opportunities on the short side. If not, then I will just stay aside. Simple as that. So to me, that's most important as a trader. Uh, so as I said earlier, either uh, I have two wave counts, either we will turn back up for deep ABC rally, or we will see just a sharp move into wave C. As you know, we have uh, seen today again some attacks in Syria from Trump. Uh, so I think that it can be very uh, tricky trading uh, or putting new trades today on. 
So I definitely because the gaps could occur on Sunday if something yeah, good comes point. out. Yes, yeah, so definitely I would love to see um, pullbacks maybe Monday, Tuesday to unfold. So definitely I like the situation as it is because uh, the wave come tells me that I should still be on the side. And also the event that we see also suggests that it's better to be on the sideline. Okay, so uh, for me, euro dollar, as I said, waiting on a bounce. Uh, now, what's interesting is also that I see dollar cat that could potentially continue lower. As you know, we have today uh, uh, we had bad US data, okay, and good Canadian data. So actually, dollar cat made a nice move to the downside. Uh, but if we expect euro dollar to move lower for the mid term and dollar cat to potentially see lower prices, especially if we consider that crude oil is in bullish mode, then I think that good trades could be on the short side of euro cat, right? So yeah, because I, you want I spoke about euro cat. I mean, this is a coincidence, obviously, but I spoke about euro cat uh, a while ago. That it's a great opportunity actually to be short. So. Thank you for enhancing that view. I mean, you know how much I value your input. That's FA Confluence. Yes, it's actually, uh, my approach is to look for pairs that uh, and trade those that have, that are stronger against the weaker. So if your dollar is going down, then dollar is stronger against the euro or on the other side, euro is weaker. And if dollar cat is going down, then cat is stronger. So you have two currencies, euro against the cat. Simple as that. So uh, Eurocat is definitely on my other screen. Just let me find it. Uh, too many markets. OK, here it is. <clears throat> so actually, that's the way from that I'm looking. Uh, as you can see, we turned to the downside here on the left uh, quite sharply, clearly in five waves. An impulse, we know uh, that this should be then be minimum first wave of a larger free wave drop, okay, ABC. And I suspect that we could see this wave series really still to unfold in the next few days, let's say early next week, especially if you have in mind that euro dollar is in a fifth wave. And we could see it bounce to the upside on euro dollar, which means euro could get stronger. And this could also be visible on a short term charts on euro cap okay so i hope that we'll see maybe this wave c rally uh, monday tuesday and then i would pay this uh, very close attention for potential shorts into this third lack of decline so um, as i said euro dollar in bearish mode dollar cat seems to be in bearish mode um, especially with crude oil turning uh, resuming the uptrend my favorite idea would be being short euro cat was this clear enough, Dale? <laughs> Excuse me, Greg? What was this clear enough? Yeah, that was very clear. So, okay. and uh, and a uh, real nice explanation about why uh, your trade selection was on the EuroCAD. So, yeah, I'm uh, also interested in, uh, uh, you know, you had a nice count that is starting to manifest on the short side of Canada itself. So. Does that change, or you still think we have 32 in it, 31 in it, uh, before there's uh, another rally to the upside in USD CAD? Uh, just let me show. I don't know why, but something is lagging now here. I don't know if it's my platform. And yeah. after that, you did make a comment that you're looking for the crude rally to continue. You're looking for a continuation of it. I'm curious uh, what kind of count you have in there as well, if you yes. have time to share that. I'm trying to change the wave card, the, the profile, but I cannot. I, it seems that, okay, can you see my charts still? Yeah, yeah, we can see them. And right now it's stuck on EuroCAD one hour. Yes, because I don't know if, Okay, wait. It looks like my platform. Yeah. That's a beautiful place. Are you yes. chasing are, are you chasing that woman chasing that woman on the beach there? <laughs> 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 so 
So you you know, because you know trading's kind of sedentary. You have to get out and get a cardio. So we're still on Eurocad. All right. We said we are going to see dollar cad, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We, are. we got the four hour. Okay. Hmm. Yes, actually, on dollar cad, um, I would rather focus on this hour chart. Clearly, there yeah. has been a five wave drop to right. one point two sixty. So again, we have five waves down. We know where next move should unfold. It should be to the downside, especially if we consider that market made a pre wave rally here. So I would watch today's close price if we will see and stay below 1.3376 or 3370 to make it round number. Um, then I think that we could be in for more weakness. But as I said, I would rather focus on euro cap than dollar okay. cap. All okay? right. It's because of dollar move in general. It's because of your conviction move, uh, real conviction level in the euro. Yes. Exactly. Right. Okay. Why? Right. Everyone understand? Give me a why. Greg, his conviction level in the euro is uh, very high about what he's looking for. Okay. Uh, actually, if there will be any questions, there is because I I cannot see. Uh, okay. Uh, any questions for Greg while he's here? I'll, I'll read them to you, Greg. Uh, can, and can we just get uh, one more view of your... Uh, what are you looking for in, in crude? Are you looking for $62 before it's over? Uh, here's crude oil. Okay, so I can maybe okay. um, add this in details. So yeah. uh, what I think it, it's probably the most important that occurred this uh, in this week for the price action I had on crude oil is that we went above 52.36. Why? Because Let's assume that, that there were bearish traders who counted this in five waves to the downside. They expected that this move to the downside would unfold in five waves. Okay? Something like this. Wave one, then you have wave two, then you have wave three, wave four, and wave five. And right. notice actually when they were tracking this fourth wave, which is actually this leg up from 47, okay, they know that this recovery must not go above or into the area of a previous correction which was here at 52.36 okay uh, uh, back above the b yes yeah. because we know that wave four must not trade in the territory of wave one okay so mm -hmm. this overlap actually confirms the fact that this decline is not impulsive simple as that this decline was not impulsive it's corrected okay and because I know that there were probably a lot of traders looking for more weakness after this extended drop that we have seen during March. So because we have seen this nice overlap, it confirms the fact that this was only three waves down. Not only that, we have clearly an impulsive rally towards this trend line. As you can see, I wrote a note that trend line can be a temporary res resistance, okay? Um, which I believe it will be broken, but firstly, we may see a pullback. And I see some nice supports here uh, to put the range in play at 49, uh, 49.80 up to 50.70, let's say. So this uh, could be quite interesting area for a bounce. Also on an hourly chart, clearly I can see five waves up here, waves one, two, extended wave three, wave four, and this spike to the upside could be a final lag that, trigger, uh, that was triggered after the Syria attack. So actually, I'm not surprised to see a reversal now. And ideally, we will see, as I said, you know, three wave uh, move down back to the areas of former fourth waves and then push to the upside above this trend line. So, so uh, is, is that 423.6 uh, an eventual target, um, 55, 65 about? You uh, have a fib extension on the right chart of 423.6 above it. You have the 200, then you have the... Yes, this was actually extension targets for uh, for this fifth wave to be... Okay. I was looking for this reversal to occur from that level because we know that uh, fifth wave, when when third wave is extended, like it was here, clearly an extended yeah. move, okay, yeah. then normally wave five will be... shorter. 
similar, shorter than wave three, definitely, but similar than wave one. In this yeah, one and five. Yeah. Yes, you can see I took the distance of wave one and I measured it from the end point of wave four, and uh, I came out with a projected level around 52.50. And then I had also another fib level a little bit higher. Normally, when I, I'm looking for reversals based on fibs, I'm trying to use more than just one fib to, make, to, to get some important region, which uh, will give you even more confidence that markets could reverse or, or stop there. Okay, so normally I suggest that if you're an electronic trader, if you are looking for some reversals, it's important to use two or ideally three fib levels that will, uh, from where market will turn and then if you will see a reaction from it, you can be confident that you are correct and maybe look for some trades uh, that are uh, biased with your particular direction that you expect. Thank, you for, your con thank you for your contribution today, Greg. It's great ask, to be on it. If I may ask him uh, something, Dale. So, uh, Greg, you, you are expecting sure. the, the next leg higher to begin from somewhere above 49.50, roughly, from what I see, right? Yeah. Yes, the, I, I would mark this as this box here. Okay. So and I, I, I don't like to focus on a particular number. It's easier, probably, to focus on a range. So, yes, $1 range here for from, 40, from around 50 to 51, let's say, around there. Okay, and as I see, your main scenario is that afterwards uh, we will we'll get a stronger leg higher since from what I see, your main scenario is that this correction is going to be wave two. So you're expecting an impulsive wave, a, a wave three higher. So obviously, uh, you, you expect a clean breach above the 54, 55 uh, dollar um, previous high, correct? Uh, Actually, I would focus on minimum expectations. Okay, so you can see that I have labeled this. Yes, alternatively as ABC. Yes, I see it. Yes, so actually, uh, maybe this lag down that uh, it unfolded from 57.50 to 47 was only one lag of something, some bigger complex correction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not necessary that we will see way free to the upside, which means that it will be a resumption of some very strong impulsive uptrend. It could be just a temporary wave C to the upside as well. But as a trader, I really don't care because if you have a good risk reward ratio, you can still make money on the upside, no matter which wave will show up. Because even wave three and wave C both are impulsive, which means you're absolutely right, but what is what is then your invalidation level having to do with taking the uh, the upside again? You you like forty nine fifty to fifty fifty, but uh, what would be uh, your the invalidation up, level for that? Uh, to the upside, I would be looking towards these resistance levels at fifty four, maybe fifty five. Okay, and when when do you know you're wrong if uh, oil keeps moving lower? What what is your uh, you know uh, your line in the sand? Um, only only if we go below forty seven. Okay. So actually, the, as we know, wave two or wave B uh, can retrace even sometimes even one hundred percent compared to wave uh, to first impulsive wave one, but not more than one hundred percent. I know that that. It's very rare, but somewhere it has to be limited. Uh, so definitely, uh, it could be a pullback deeper than I expect because uh, sometimes the markets, as we know, surprise. But I like to focus on and pay attention to wide lines. And wide lines suggest that corrections, when they will occur, they may stop at the region of a previous fourth waves. And the origin of the previous fourth waves, as we can see here uh, on the right chart, on the hourly chart is at 50.75, okay, is of the higher degree and one lesser degree has it at 49.80, which are exactly these levels here. So that's why I'm more focused on these levels than any deeper pullbacks. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Glad to be part of the team with you, Gregor. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what do you think, Steve? Uh, any other contributions? Uh, hey, about um, 
One thing I wanted Hopefully. to mention is, the, uh, hey, the dollar index hit the 618 retracement um, this morning. Um, if you, uh, if you, you can just go to Forex Analytics. I just up, uploaded a chart. It was a four hour. Um, it's March high to March low, slightly divergent relative strength. Um, you know, um, uh, it, it's, it's something worth noting because we stopped there on a dime and with gold breaking out, you know, it, 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 it to be chasing the dollar long, it, yeah, go over the dollar index. And go to basic technical. Uh, like I said, with gold uh, holding up, it, it's it's real tough. Yeah, you're right. You're right there. Let's scroll down just a little bit. There you go. Oh. You can click the alert up there too. Either, it, whatever you want to do. Yeah, and uh, you see that four hour. There we go. You notice how we're we're slightly divergent. We hit the yeah. six one eight. It's previous support. Uh, you know, you got to be a little careful being long the dollar here. You know, just coming into this knowing that gold is strong. Um, now, I don't. If we break out, that'd be very very bullish for the dollar. Um, not sure if it's going to happen, but I just wanted to warn people just in case you you happen to be long the dollar and you're like, oh, why is not why is it not breaking out? That's probably the reason right now. Yeah, that you know, that's kind of a looks like a little bit of just distribution there to me, Blake. You know, rubber bands can always stretch further than we think, but the la the whole month of April looks like distribution. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it it it, it does. Um but, I mean, if know. it was a continuation formation, we we shouldn't uh, be giving people like from your red line that look like a breakout over resistance that it's been above and below. Any time a market gives people a lot of time to think about buying a breakout, I'm a little bit jaded. You know, that's what crew did when everyone thought we had a breakout at you know over 54. You know, it, it held a weekly breakout for almost three months before the sell-off. You know, markets aren't don't make things that convenient. When you have a good breakout, it might retest it once, but to give people a lot of time, Mr. Market's not that nice. That yeah. is to say, you know, I'll give you two weeks to decide to get along here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's just something I think everybody's got to proceed cautiously. I, you know, as Nick pointed out, the euro dollar is near the 106 trend line support. You've got trend line resistance in the dollar yen at 111. You got a lot of risks around this weekend. I I would be really careful. And and as Greg had pointed out too, with the, you know with everything that's happening in Syria, you just got to be very cautious. Um, uh, be careful being too long the dollar up here. Um, you know, just 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 some. Just some comments. Um, in a very, it's obviously been a very choppy uh, NFP. I mean, we got a weak number, weaker un unemployment. The dollar whipped around. It hit lows. It whipped to highs. Stopped everybody out on the on the upside, and it stopped everybody out on the downside. This is what I said about what about 45 minutes ago. You got to be careful that we just whipped back and forth. We might just end up where we started uh, with the dollar, and 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 really just hurt everybody in between. You know, you know, you know, Blake. You said that at the beginning of the week that it most likely was going to be kind of a choppy, difficult week uh, with all the numbers coming out, and you just had uh, your trader's intuition telling you not much would happen. There'll be a lot of uh, uh, a lot to do about not much, and that was your intuition was spot on. Well, thanks. So we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, we're we're so close to breaking. I mean, you know, part of me wants to really just start buying the dollar if the euro starts breaking below 106. But as as long as the euro is above 106, I can't. You know, I, I don't I don't think I can come to grips with uh, being too bullish the dollar at this point. So, uh, you know, it, 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 we're gonna have to tread carefully here. And 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 uh, like I said, you get you know the dollar starting to pull up a little, pull down. Um, it's starting to pull back a little bit, so just uh, be careful. And that that that's gonna that's gonna be it for my comments. It's it's so choppy out there. I just want you guys all to be you know extremely careful. One thing that I always stress on my old webinars, the ones that I did for many years with the Wise Trade Group, is guys, you know, you're here because 
you have an account to trade. You know, if you if you um, trade recklessly, and you're then you can't trade anymore, and you're not listening to this webinar anymore. That's no good for anybody, especially, you know, it's not good for us, it's not good for you, it's not, you know, we want you to succeed, and, you know, there are times where you have to be extra cautious in the market. This is one of those times, and I, and I, and I say that, you know, wholeheartedly, because I, you know, and, and Dale, I'm sure, could speak the same, you know, we, 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 we build a special bond with you guys and gals that are listening in at home, and we, you know, and, um, on many accounts with many traders that I've known over the years, I've become good friends with. And even uh, I met Steve um, uh, Volgarius and, and, and on the webinar. And then we became, you know, uh, partners and, and, and started this venture together. You know, and, and that's all, you know, due to this community. And, you know, we want you to be... We want you to be safe and and take care out there. And there are certain times where you know things are very clear. We got a lot of clarity. There's a times like right now where things aren't so clear. So you got to be extra careful. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, thank you guys for listening in to me and Dale. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Okay, uh, I really enjoyed my first week here at Face. I hope everyone did. Uh, I hope that we're adding value to what you're trying to accomplish as a trader uh, with this team that Blake has put together and now the room. Everyone enjoy their time here with us this week. Hope you did. You're welcome, David. You know, I thought I'd put together maybe uh, a little theme song for FACE. If you're looking for a good place, do your trading. Face. Living at home but want a new house. Hang out with us before you click your mouse. Give me an F, an A, C, E, Face is your place to become an ace. That's our new theme song for face, guys. Thank you for being patient with me while I was getting used to all this new stuff. But I'll, I tell, love you, it, Dale. I, I'll tell you Thank something, you. Blake. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun, and I'm learning every day. I feel like I'm, you know, part of the community hanging out with you guys, with you and Steve and and Nick and Grega today, and I'm so I'm looking forward to uh, talking to Stelios and the community providing great screenshots. Uh, I know I'm not objective because I'm part of it, but I've tweeted it. I mean it. It's the most compelling content on a daily basis that I've ever been part of. So I hope you're happy with your hope you're happy with your decision to take me on. I'm uh, I'm very happy to be here. Hundred percent. Glad to have you here, Dale. All Thank right, you so much for your efforts. Everyone have a great weekend. I'm not going to pitch you anymore. Everyone knows how great the site is, and you know what? Uh, when it's all said and done, my friends, you're not going to be thinking about what your best trades were. You're going to be thinking about who you laughed with, who you cried with and your relationships, and uh, like Blake was talking about how relationships develop here, I've made many friends uh, hanging out with them every day over the last four years, including Blake, and now Steve, and Nick, and, and uh, so these are real relationships, even though it's over the internet, and maybe we'll have a, a get-together once a year where everyone from FA could get together and meet each other in person, break bread. That would be that would be a lot of fun. But I say this every day to people that don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And if you had a great week and you had windfalls and you see someone out there holding a cardboard sign, realize how blessed you are to even be able to risk money. They have money to risk to put uh, into the market. And uh, if you see these people, give them a hand. Throw them a pip or two. And if they go and you go, oh, I'm not going to help anyone who's poor. They're just going to go to the liquor store and buy booze or they're going to buy drugs. 
so what? Yeah, it, maybe it's going to help them get out of their misery for a little bit. So plant good seeds, and you'll have a great harvest. That's why faces come together, because we planted good seeds. So that's the end of my homily. Enjoy your weekend. Do your homework. That's the best time to do your homework is over the weekend when markets are closed. Come in with your work and show your best stuff because if you really want to be an ace, you got to show your charts in face. Adios, Steve. Adios, everybody. See you, Blake. Have a great bye bye, weekend. Daniel. Thank you very much. And enjoy the spring. Enjoy the spring. Money comes and goes. Time is gone forever. Make it count. I'll see everyone on Monday. Shalom, inshallah, peace.